What do we mean by DNA sequencing? It is a technique by which, the precise order of nucleotides in a DNA segment can be determined. Today we are going to discuss, original Sanger method of DNA sequencing. This method forms the basis of modern computer automated sequencing techniques. Sanger sequencing was developed by Frederick Sanger and colleagues, at the University of Cambridge in 1977. This technique involves, in vitro DNA synthesis. It is based on the principle and biochemistry of DNA replication. Tell me, what will be the basic requirements for in vitro DNA synthesis? First, we should have a DNA template strand. This strand will provide complementary basis for the synthesis of the new strand. Here, this is 3 prime end of template strand and this is 5 prime end. Next, we require a primer. As you know, a primer is a short oligonucleotide sequence, complementary to the sequence, at the 3 prime end of the template strand. It serves as the starting point for new strand synthesis. We will also require the oxynucleotides. To catalyze the DNA synthesis reaction we require DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase incorporates deoxynucleotides complementary to the template strand and extends the DNA chain in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Now here we need to note very important point. Primer is one of the essential requirements of DNA synthesis. But why? Because DNA polymerase cannot catalyze the synthesis reaction on its own. It requires 3' hydroxyl group to form phosphodiester bond with the incoming deoxynucleotide. And this initial 3' hydroxyl group is provided by the primer. Once DNA synthesis is initiated, each deoxynucleotide incorporated in the growing DNA chain has a hydroxyl group at the 3' position of the deoxyribose molecule. And thus, DNA polymerase keeps on elongating the chain. Sanger DNA sequencing technique makes use of modified deoxynucleotides known as D-deoxynucleotides. Now, what are these deoxynucleotides and, what is their function in DNA sequencing? Look at this image. This is a basic chemical structure of a deoxynucleotide. Here, you can see that, at the 3' prime position of sugar, hydroxyl group is present. This is the 3' prime hydroxyl group which, participates in phosphodiester bond formation during DNA synthesis. Now, look at this image. Here, the hydroxyl group is absent at the 3' prime position of the sugar. Instead, there is a 3' prime hydrogen. This is the deoxynucleotide. If in a DNA synthesis reaction, a deoxynucleotide is added, the DNA synthesis will terminate with the incorporation of this deoxynucleotide. This is because, now there is no 3' hydroxyl group for the further extension of DNA chain. For this reason, deoxynucleotides are called chain termination nucleotides. And, Sanger technique is also known as chain termination method or deoxyDNA sequencing. So, if the concept of deoxynucleotide is clear to you, it will be easy to understand the procedure and, interpret the results of Sanger sequencing technique. Let's now move on to the Sanger sequencing method. Sanger sequencing consists of four separate reactions, that run parallelly. We will label them as 1, 2, 3 and, 4. Each of these reactions has some components that are common to all. These common components are, First component is, DNA template strand. Many copies of this strand are used in each reaction. 
Let's say this is our template strand. Second component is DNA primer. Again many copies of DNA primer are used. Sanger Radio labeled these primers for detection purpose. Third component is DNA polymerase. And fourth component consists of all four standard deoxynucleotides or DNTPs. They are used in large amounts. Besides these common components, small amounts of one deoxynucleotide or DDNTP is added in each reaction. This is the component which is different in each reaction. So, for our illustration let's say, DDATP is added in the first reaction, DDCTP in second, DDGTP in third and, DDTTP in fourth. Now, as we know, D-deoxynucleotides or DDNTPs when incorporated in an elongating DNA chain, they will terminate DNA synthesis reaction. Since, small amounts of DDNTP are included in each reaction, DNA synthesis will not terminate every time. But DNA polymerase will occasionally insert a DDNTP, instead of a DNTP into a growing DNA strand. Since the incorporated DDNTP lacks three prime hydroxyl group, it cannot form a bond with another nucleotide. And DNA synthesis will terminate. Thus, in each case, we will get partially replicated fragments. Let's understand this for the first reaction. This is our DNA template strand and, this is the primer. DDATP is present in lower amount. DDATP will be incorporated occasionally wherever normal DATP is to be incorporated complementary to thymine residue. And each time a DDATP is incorporated the DNA synthesis terminates. So, as you can see there are three thymine residues in the template strand. Complementary to these thymine residues, DDATP can be incorporated in the new strand. At the end of this reaction, there will be three partially replicated DNA fragments. Similarly, three partial replication products will be produced in second reaction, where DDCTP will be incorporated occasionally, complementary to guanine residue. In the third reaction, two partial replication products are produced. And in the fourth reaction, four partial replication products are produced. Upon the completion of the four parallel reactions, partial replication DNA products will occur, for every nucleotide in the template. That means each reaction has now a set of DNA fragments that have same starting point but, different end points. In the next step, these reaction mixtures are subjected to polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. The contents of each reaction are loaded into separate lanes of a DNA electrophoresis gel. Polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis separates the partial DNA fragments of each reaction, on the basis of their size. Smallest fragments migrate to maximum distance in the gel. And, largest fragment migrates to the minimum distance. Next step is, determination of sequence of the DNA segment. Since, Sanger Radio labeled the primers in each reaction mixture. Autoradiograph of the gel was obtained. Autoradiograph is a photograph of gel produced by radiation from radioactive material present in the partial DNA fragments in the gel. Let's say this is the autoradiograph of the gel. We will label each lane according to the DNTP with which the partial DNA fragments should end. Now, let's understand the interpretation of DNA sequence. As we know, bands are arranged according to their size. 
smallest fragment is found at the bottom of the autoradiograph and, largest fragment is found at the top. We will read the sequence from bottom to top according to their increasing size. Shortest fragment is in the alien at the bottom. This shortest fragment means that the didoxy ATP was added nearest to the three prime end of the primer. The second shortest fragment is in the T lane, then in the G lane, then in the C lane, and so on. Thus, the sequence which we read in this autoradiograph from bottom to top is A, T, G, C, A, C, T, T, G, A, T, C. The direction is 5 prime to 3 prime, from bottom to top. Now, the sequence we read, is the sequence of the newly synthesized strand. So, what will be the sequence of template strand? It will be complementary to the sequence read from autoradiograph. So, this is 5 prime end of the template strand and this is 3 prime end. And the sequence is G A T C A A G T G C A T Thus we successfully obtained the sequence of given DNA strand That's all in today's video lecture I hope it is helpful to you Thank you for watching